whispering. All right, so we made it to Chris's studio. Hey, I made it. Yes, I did. How are you? I'm stoked. What's up? Hi. Joey's here. Oh, I've arrived. We can all go home now. I thought you were in Cali, like a couple days ago. I've been traveling. I've been traveling all over. Went to Phoenix, went to California. Now I'm here. Can't wait to go home. <laughs> so happy you made time for us. Yes. Let's do that tour. place. He has the dream setup, man. This is incredible. So vibey. Look at that. Sounds treatment. great. Yeah, sounds killer. This is going to be a good one. Oh, oh, I love when things are easy. This is going to be so easy. It's hotter inside than it is outside and I'm dying and I'm sorry, Joel, but my jacket game is not strong enough for you. So I just have to ask, like, is, is Portlandia true to what Portland actually is? Uh, Portlandia is pretty dumbed down. Honestly, like Portland is ridiculous. Uh, it's a great city. Wow. It's slowly become a little less Portlandia as yeah. all the people that have moved here because of Portlandia that are now making it less. So like they Portlandia. polluted the port? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's the same thing that happened in San Francisco on a right. smaller scale. Oh, Finn has hey. returned. Setup yeah. day. It's setup day, so here's a setup montage and a stupid transition. So Chris is going to leave to run some errands. Miss you. Maybe. I'll be back. Hey Machine. I know you heard my shout out on the last one, but look what I found. Oh, dude. Did it fly at you? It's still on my, my left ear. Oh, really? <laughs> ah! So, Chris just said they were what? Dutch and Dutch HCs. Interesting. I've actually never heard of... I've never heard of Dutch and Dutch ever. It's cool because they have like front, like a front and then a sub in the back. Two. Right. That's nuts. Spotty. It's kind of like an open back, open back headphones. Really? Yeah. So, like, how'd you get the tree? Did, uh, my just... uncle cut down a bunch of trees on his property and then uh, he's actually the one that like cut it and oh, stuff gotcha. and I planed it and finished it and whatnot but, but it yeah. works good. Dude, Andrew and I, we did the, we, we built the audio compound. I go nuts on this kind of stuff like yeah. construction stuff now because I had never done an ounce of it. And... It feels so good. Yeah, you dude. do it and, and you're like, oh man, I did that. Like man, a 10 hour good. day of just like building like shelves. I was mm -hmm. like, wow. Like, Definitely very therapeutic. Do you self produce like the what's called the crash? No, no, I never wanted anything to do with that. Uh, so there's a huge difference between being good at producing your own material and producing other people's material. And some people are good at both, but they're completely different tasks. I'm not a self producer type of guy. That's just not. I don't have interest in that. I feel like I thrive working with other people, um, and my investment in the project is based on the record specific. Part of me is also invested in, uh, you know, what the merch looks like for the record. And you know oh. what I mean? Like, it's a very different thing. In my experience doing like self-producing and working with your own band, uh, I've heard this story too a lot from other people as well. I'm curious if you, if you feel the same, but like the people in your band, like almost like 
not not don't respect your time but they just think that like because you're doing it that like you can just do these things quickly like yeah. just super fast yeah know? and that's a big deal um because when you work with a band especially like a band on a label or a band that has a following there's more than just money involved like the the whole social media aspect of it mm -hmm. now and getting a record out in a timely manner so that you know pe that people talk about it and it catches on at the right time um doesn't really happen when you self-produce cool then i can fill some time with tom because that's all like super important stuff to me i see like stuff like that just, that you just said is kind of in that category yeah. that shit that but, people won't know unless someone else tells them yeah Dude, you know what? Just as we should talk about bleed. Have a short video about bleed. Sure. Oh yeah, I can talk about. I Dude, can definitely elaborate on why I think oh, it's actually important to make to, to making drums sound real. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Oh. Okay. I'll miss you. Thank you guys. It's been good. Thanks for hanging. At least we'll see you. Oh. And it is oh. raining. Jeez. We're gonna hang out with Chris later tonight. We'll see you there. All right, so we are in downtown Portland, hanging out with Chris Kermit. Gonna have some dinner. Fun fact for you guys, this pizza shop here started by Matt. This is Chris Crummett parting real hard with URM Academy. Chug in. Chug in that whiskey sour. <laughs> there look, look at that chopstick skill. I just use this clip. I'm actually pretty impressed. Now this is content. Alright, since I'm holding this, I can't do my cheesy hand motions at the camera anymore, but had a great dinner with uh, the late, great Chris Kermit. It's gonna be ha pretty hard to film some b-roll out on the town tonight because of the rain, but I'm gonna try. Just another day in Portland, I suppose. You're gonna bring the in, Ralph. Not see you. Goodbye, friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am down for you to stop by. If you feel like Note to the viewers at home: Crit Finn has incredibly smooth hands. It slipped right out. <laughs> so it's, I think it's so you can shake lots of hands really fast. Are you pretty used to the rain here, or is it like a normal thing, or is this? I'm pretty used to it. Yeah, I'm very used to it. Not so pretty used to it. Uh, you know, it rains for like a few hours here and there. This is more than normal. So it rains a lot of days, but not like all day. So this is your casual getup, even though it's like, oh, okay. I'm not stressing about it. I knew it was raining. I went outside. I put a hat on. So I'm trying to survive this rain thing. It's hard. That was awesome. That is, that was a very unique nail the mix. So it's day two, and today's stream day. Pretty stoked about stream day because Chris has done a lot of my favorite albums from like high school. Yes, and I do mean the fangirly ones like this. Or the obscure ones like this. All right, so we'll be at Chris's studio. All right, so we're here at Chris's place, and today's stream day. So I'm gonna leave Chris alone because he's doing some major prep stuff. And off the ale in three, two, one. Welcome to October 2018 Nail the Mix with Mr. Chris Crumman and Dance Gavin Dance. Chris, thank you so much for being with us. It's my pleasure because I went back and balanced those in the beginning. So how much editing did you do to get this balance between too tight and not tight enough? 
Matt's dynamics sometimes are so even and there's a lot of stuff that stays at a single dynamic that people thought it was like one shots or something, but it's literally him playing, playing perfect. Eight hours later. It was a pleasure. Good night. Take I'll easy, see you guys man. tomorrow. Thank All right, man. See you tomorrow morning. Yeah. Thank you. Just got back from the live stream. That was awesome. That is, that was a very unique Nail the Mix. That was the longest segment ever on mastering. It was the longest segment ever on automation. He went crazy with automation. I knew, I knew it was gonna be awesome too. I've, I've loved Chris's stuff for a while now and I knew, and he's, he's done educational stuff like this before. So I knew he was gonna slam dunk it and it was mm. awesome. Yeah, when I was like younger, I noticed that Chris's mixes sounded not over processed and I didn't realize how much automation played a factor in yeah. it sounding like balanced, but not like crushed. Yeah, if you watch that live stream back, I mean, he used, I think, fab filter just to do high passing more than anything. Like it was so minimalistic. <laughs> All right, so I'm pretty sure Nick's beat. I'm pretty beat. We'll catch it tomorrow. We're going to film some fast tracks. We're going to do an interview. What are we doing tomorrow? Uh, fast track tomorrow, uh, do a little more commercial work and then, uh, a master rescue, which is like mixed rescue, but Chris is going to do a mastering section of it. And then, uh, I think he's also going to be filming some mix labs too, which is pretty cool. So content, Ton content, content, tons of stuff. See you tomorrow. So it's day three, day after stream day, but today we're doing the fast tracks, catch it at Chris's studio. All right, so we just made it to Chris's studio. Actually, we got here a little early. Chris is uh, getting dressed, looking spiffy. All right, so Chris just made it. I just made it, finally. Laundry crisis, but uh, it's all okay now. I found a shirt I'd never worn before. Are you wearing that shirt? I'm wearing that shirt. Oh, look at that. Play some cinematic slow motion with that shirt. Yes, completely unnecessary. No, it's really necessary. <laughs> All right, so it's fast track day. Cue that montage. Just kind of add a subtle enhancement to a track. Um, I don't really want to use the term. Mick Barnes asks, is there anything that you do to pregame going into work to get amped up for the studio? Definitely a cup of good coffee and uh, generally two Eggo waffles because two Eggo that's waffles. what my son eats and there's four slots in our toaster. So <laughs> I make I make him too and I make myself too. Sometimes peanut butter. If, if I really need that extra kick, I'll put some peanut butter on the waffle. All right, as you can see, Chris has got those waffles getting gassed up over here. I'm gonna have Mel start a timer, and we're gonna see how long I can go without spilling coffee on this white shirt. Hey Siri, start the stopwatch. All right, it's starting. Let's see how good this gets. All right, let's see how long Chris goes without spilling coffee on his white shirt. Yeah, after watching the Nail the Mix, I finally realized why Chris's mixes sound the way they do. I always felt like Chris's mixes sounded a bit more natural than like the normal producers or the standard producers. And I realized automation is like the main game for that. Yeah, automation makes a big difference. It's kind of how you breathe life back into stuff that you've uh, squashed down. And that's kind of my philosophy, is to squash things and then uh, regain control with automation <laughs> instead <laughs> of letting them run wild. Because I feel like if I just set something and leave it, it just mm -hmm. gets super stale. So when I track, every single guitar part, I'm like tweaking the guitar tone just a little bit so it's perfect for that guitar part. It's not oh. necessarily like changing amps, but like when I'm tracking, it's like, this next section or even like this section of the riff uh the gain goes down a hair treble goes up a hair to make sure the riff sounds perfect i do the same thing in the mix as well as to where just because a verse sounds rad doesn't mean the chorus or the pre-chorus is going to sound really cool with that mix so every little part has to be like perfect for that it's part. all micro mix yeah, yeah yeah it's just like a micro mix for each thing because it just doesn't like it's different chords it's different frequencies coming through um, a lot of times it's, it's slightly different instrumentation. For me at least, I can't just like set it and forget it because then I want to change little things on other parts. At a certain point I realized that instead of just 
spending all this time to try to get the whole thing perfect um, and make some perfect balance that it was much quicker and more fruitful to mix each part separately or mi mm. micro mix like you're saying 45 minutes strong oh we got Chris here going overboard with the outboard going overboard with the outboard I'm distressed we might be distressed with not I'm just being funny I, I got that Talking about me every time I shut this door. I just really didn't like lower D. Oh it's no! Just, That's why you're going to see him in San Diego on December 14th. Yeah, shameless and plug. Soma. <laughs> <laughs> so far. So I'm building a display for Chris, and I feel like I'm back at Guitar Center building displays. <laughs> um, the amp wall is done. Then now I'm arranging the drum stuff. Okay. Don't mind me, just rearranging Chris's studio. And it turns out Chris has more snare drums. Look at that. I found a Dance Gavin Dance drumstick. How fitting, because this is the Dance Gavin Dance Nailed Mix. All right, just arranged Chris's drums. If you guys don't know this about Chris, other than producing all of these bands, he's also a drummer, so he knows his drum tones. He has a good insight on how to hit things and makes hitting things sound good. Like Joey's a drummer. That's why his drum tone sound cool too. <laughs> Woo! Look at this place. It's clean, got the amps all rearranged. Drum set super sick. Even made a cool little shrine for like the rest of the drums that aren't being used. Super stoked. Super stoked for the video I made. So we're on like a three day streak of Thai food. Oh, Convinced that I'm all about it. It never ends. Chris is pretty tied up. Oh, there's a really good Thai restaurant in Portland called Appetizer. Just goes along with your pun. Awesome. So Chris is going strong with five hours and a clean shirt. Yeah, white shirt, no spills. Uh, one box of drunken noodles and two coffees down and I'm doing good. I'm gonna try to ride this through the rest of the night. <laughs> there you go. Best of the money shot. All right, so Joe is leaving. All good things must come to an end. I'm gonna see you tonight, though. Yeah, I'll be at the meetup, and you guys should be there too. And if you haven't come to a meetup yet, you should come because they're fun. Lots of fun. All right. <laughs> bye. Uh, bye bye. I'll miss you. So I was wondering, what's your guys' favorite album done by Chris? I think mine either is, I know he did some work on the I The Mighty stuff, so I The Mighty's album, either the most recent one or Connector. Other than that, I've said it a million times, the No Bragging Rights, Consequence of Dreams was one of my favorite ones from his earlier works. To be honest, Chris has done a lot of stuff that I really like. What's your guys'? Throw it in the comments below. So Chris and Nick have been going at it for a while. They've been crushing out these fast tracks. Look at them go. Can you keep that going overnight? So I can try. I'm wearing I can try. the same shirt tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I would love to like tomorrow morning just be like disheveled and be like 24 hours. Shirt's still clean. All right, we'll, we'll see you tonight then. Right. Yeah, man, we'll see you in a little bit. Thanks I'm for putting up with us. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so bit. much. Yeah. I'll see you later. So we made it to the meetup place. We're just trying to figure out how to get in. Ooh, ooh. All right, let's see where everyone's at. Josh, I don't know. Ten hours going strong. Champion for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He jumps up. Cheers. Cheers. Nothing on my shirt. I love pineapple on pizza. Uh, hot pineapple in general is really good. If you roast a pineapple on a barbecue, rub some fucking sugar. Oh yeah, pineapple on a burger. Sure, I don't really eat hamburgers, but put put it on any other kind of chicken burger or something. I love it. Pineapple and cheese, it's great. It's kind of like how apples and cheese go together. And some people think that's weird, but man, you put a slice of cheddar on an apple pie, and it's really good. Mr. Crumbit.
believes in the pineapple on the pizza, and he also believes in other sweets. Oh, <laughs> cheers, cheers to the candle. candle. Cheers to the pineapple on the pizza. Cheers one more time. Boom. My name is Joshua Hollins, and I'm out of uh, Vancouver, Washington. I joined URM, it was, would have been September. I don't remember which year, but it was the year that Periphery was the month. And then, since then, haven't turned back. I'm now 39. I've been doing this for about almost 20 years of recording studio. The community that they have, like taking just the community itself, you now have people you can talk to that actually understand your problems. And so it, it helps having people that are like, hey, know what you're doing. But it, but it goes to show that when you have the right people that are looking out for you, that you can actually accomplish the things that you want. My name is Carl Wintering. I've been a member since the beginning of Joey Sturgis podcast all the way through URM until current day. We were nail mix enhanced and it's been amazing. It's access to the pros. It's the songwriting, the intelligence of the mixing, the arrangements. You get to hear the source samples of everything. It's been the best resource. Whether you mix, whether you're in a band, cannot, I cannot overstate how important it is that you subscribe. Who produced this shoes? I don't, I don't know. All right, I'm heading out. It was a pleasure. Dude, so nice to meet you. You're beautiful. Nice to meet you. If you post this all of these dudes were super cool. All right, we got a long day tomorrow with Chris. I'm being annoying. I'm vlogging. People are looking at me. I'm gonna transition. 30 hours. So we just made it back to Chris's studio. So we're 26 hours in to a perfect shirt's looking good. White clean shirt. I'm proud of you. Thanks, man. I feel good. We're chilling. It's break time. They've been killing the content. Crushing. Crushing. Just like his mix bus. Hey! Yo. So on the first vlog, someone asked for an Australian accent, so I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen, is it? Just kidding. No, <laughs> no. Um, but you can do this with your phone, too, I think. Um, what I would recommend when mm. you're like starting to do that, to kind of fight, to, to stay conscious about it, uh, -huh. uh, you can download, you have an iPhone, right? Yeah. And pick a spot that's comfortable and just leave your phone sitting right here, mm -hmm. you know, or like right in front of you and, uh, just throughout the day, just keep an eye on it and make sure you're not like going over, like, you know what I mean? If you yeah. put it there and you say, okay, the start of the day, like negative 30 DB or, you know, negative 70, whatever the hell it shows up as. Uh, mm. feels comfortable just fucking monitor that monitor your monitor so it's like negative 53 mm -hmm. and then just as you're going make sure you're not like turning it up and obviously talking is actually because it's closer but and you can put it I mean you can put it like there but basically just set a, a goal you know what I mean and keep an eye on it and as the mix builds just turn your monitors down a little bit and make sure you're not Going over that, I did that for a long time with a real SPL meter. That's another cool tip from Chris. Helps you take care of yourself and your career. Long term Keep mixing. Ears fresh. Ears as fresh as my trail mix. There you go. But it's not as fresh as that shirt. Mm. Mm. Perfect. So if you guys record with Chris or ever intern, if he does that, get him trail mix. Specifically, Trader Joe's Happy Tracking. This is not a plug. He likes consuming mixes. Well, he mixes. Oh, real fucking done. <laughs> I don't know how Chris tolerates us. Not even listening. Question from Julian. What are your three favorite pieces of analog gear? My three favorite pieces? Mm -hmm. uh, the VAC rack, definitely, on every mix. Um, I love it. It's been on every lead vocal I've done since 2008 late 2007 um, and I love the distressors they're fantastic they also work 
really well on vocals along with the back rack. They sound amazing on drums. There's a lot of stuff that can be done with them. And then the other thing is my Chandler TG2. This one? I've owned, yep. It's a stereo mic pre that I've owned since 2005, and it's probably the only thing in this studio that hasn't been sold or rebought at some point. 30 hours and no stains. So we got Chris grabbing some tikka masala. None of it's on my shirt though. Going strong. Mm hmm. Man. Ticking it up. So AL, Nick, and Chris are gearing up for the mix rescue. No, the master rescue. The master rescue. It's gonna be fun. Save someone's life. How to save a master. How to save a life. But Chris is still going strong with 34 hours in the I same know, shirt. No, my shirt's clean, dude. I'm gonna have to Skype you tomorrow once you get home. <laughs> oh my I'll god. I'll prove I'm still wearing the shirt and it's still freaking clean. Actually, the second you like, it's gonna be, uh, what's that called? Synchronicity, where the second you step off the plane and get home, a coffee is just gonna like come out of nowhere and land on my shirt. <laughs> So Chris is looking for an intern. Um, I'm always looking for interns. Okay, yeah. preferably people with Pro Tools experience um, and school is a bonus, but uh, I prefer that my interns have at least a month of time to dedicate um, and have a pretty flexible schedule. Any tips for anyone who's interning or wants to intern for other studios or producers? What do Work you hard, be persistent, no Pro Tools and other popular DAWs, because that's a big selling point. All right, me and Nick are fully packed up, ready to go. It's Woo! Been awesome, guys. Yes, it has, dude. Boom. Love it. Boom. Bam. Wow. Two. Boom. Solid. Very nice. All go. the way. Wow. Look at that. Hell yeah. What, a, what an ending. All right. Thanks for watching and tolerating me for about probably about 20 minutes. I hope it's 20 minutes or less. Um, we're here in Portland. Signing off. Stay tuned on the next vlog. We're gonna go to where are we going? Uh, we're going to Denver. See you there. Bye.